This is Procurement Weekly, brought to you by GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting. Procurement Weekly keeps you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities, bids, pre-solicitations, RFIs, sources sought, online government events, bid updates, success stories, procurement interviews, and much more. And now, with this week's show, here's your host, Kim Harwell. Welcome to Procurement Weekly. I'm your host, Kim Harwell. As you're very well aware of by now, Procurement Weekly is about contracts now. And over our first few episodes, we've tried to demonstrate that. Current, up-to-date, the hottest contracts that are available right now, federal, state, and local, for prime contracting, for you subcontractors, for teaming, as well as even some commercial business. We try to show you the latest up-to-date information, where the money is right now, dollar amounts, names, dates, incumbents, winners, etc. And I'd like to thank you for your overwhelming support of this show. In our first episode, we had over 5,000 viewers. Thank you so much, and thanks to our sponsors. And in our next episode, we expect to have over 5,000 again. And so thank you so much. If you happen to miss it live, you can always go back and view Procurement Weekly on our YouTube or Facebook pages. And again, our goal during these times is to help small businesses and all businesses for that matter survive and even thrive. And we're glad to see that we're getting results. Businesses are winning as a result of this show combined with our daily newsletter, Procurement Daily. And to subscribe to Procurement Daily, or if you have any topic ideas or success stories, please email us at info at govpurchase.com. As I keep telling you, there's more business now than ever. And guess what? It's all online. So by popular demand, by your request, in this episode, we'll mix it up a little. And we'll have more state and local per your request. And in our first segment, we'll cover small business manufacturing. In our second segment, we'll cover general engineering opportunities. In our third segment, we'll go back to one of your favorites, PPE, but remember, have the PPE. And in our fourth segment, we'll cover general COVID-19 opportunities. And then finally, in the grand finale, we will end with success stories. Who are the winners? What are the dollar amounts? What's happening out there? And how can you get involved? And for many of you, how can you get further involved? So without further ado, here it comes. Let's get down to business. In our first segment, we like to cover small business manufacturing opportunities. And many of these opportunities are for machine shops. If this COVID-19 pandemic has taught us one thing here in the United States as businesses and as governments, is that we need to do more manufacturing inside of the United States domestically. We have so many capable, small, medium, and large manufacturers. And for various reasons that we've seen, manufacturing needs to be done here at home in as many cases as possible. And we at Procurement Weekly and through Gov Purchase have been supporting manufacturers for years. You'll see that many of our sponsors are manufacturers, such as Bosch, such as Bose and many others, Weatherhaven, and so many other of our customers are manufacturers. So we want to support the manufacturing community. But what you'll find in this segment is that manufacturers and distributors of parts and products to the military and civilian government, they, it's a totally different animal. And they have a whole different set of requirements from service providers. So let's get down to business. In our first section, a special treat 
for some of our manufacturers. As I mentioned earlier, manufacturing is desperately needed in the United States. We need to manufacture more domestically. And manufacturers in the United States are very underserved. And so we here at Procurement Weekly understand that. And we do have the facilities to service manufacturers. So let's just take a look at a few general manufacturing opportunities. And the cool thing about these opportunities is these products, parts, that the military, for the most part, orders on a regular basis can be made by uh, small businesses and machine shops. So here's a clamp assembly retainer. So let's take a look. And this is from the Department of Defense. And you have to okay yourself to take a look at this. And then here it is. And so it's actually a kit. And it has many, many parts associated with this particular kit. And so those of you that are manufacturers and or distributors of parts and products, you know what this is. You know what this looks like. And these are what are called RFQs, requests for quotes, not RFPs, requests for proposal. And here's what you need to know. So let's take a look at this system. Let's go right to the part, which is a national stock number, NSA. And now you can see everything regarding the particular part. A few little uh, manufacturers uh, technical characteristics there. You see you need to see the award history, who sold it, how much, and when it was sold. As you can see it was last sold in May of 2019 and before that it had not been sold since 2012. So there's a good chance this company either missed it or um, they could be out of business. We could check that but Let's keep moving. All right. And then down here, you see the commercial part numbers, which are important, and the approved sources, which are usually the OEM, the original manufacturers, their cage code, and their website information. And if there's a forecast, you can look at the forecast. That way, you'll know if and when they will purchase this part again. So the next time they'll purchase six in um, June of 2021 and and that's it so if you and that's important for manufacturers to know as well and then another probably vitally important thing are drawings what do the parts look like these are all of the things this is a different animal manufacturing and these are the things that manufacturers distributors engineers of parts and products need. so we'll just take a look at this first drawing and then we'll move on but this basically is the casing, et cetera. And then the rest of the drawings are there. So that was number one. Let's move on to our next manufacturing opportunity. So this is a loop clamp. And when you see the commas, that means it's, it's called a nomenclature, a technical name. So let's look at this one. And it looks similar to the last one. All right. And so there it is. And you can take a look at it. The solicitation package is right here. And again, it's an RFQ. And so let's uh, let's take a look at that. Get a little more detailed information. About it. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh, national stock number. It's a very inexpensive part. $3.18 was the last award price. And let's see. Lynn Electronics, one of our customers, sold it last. And it usually runs in quantities of 100 or so. And they have been small. So a little small part. A company in Michigan, Motor Parts Inc. of Michigan, sold it at one point. And sometimes what distributors will do, they will contact suppliers to see if the suppliers are able to provide that part and in many cases the distributor will sell some of those parts especially the smaller parts all right and let's keep it moving here let's look at this hand crank and by now you know it's located here on the department of defense site and in this case it's a pdf 
So we'll take a quick look at it. And this is a request for quote. And in this case, you fill out the information. And if you keep going, you'll see all the fire information, all the legal jargon, etc. And then if you keep going, you'll see more information here. And at some point, you get to the uh, history, some of the history anyway. More information. And then, it, and then finally, let's see, you get to the quantity that they want. And I saw it here a second ago, right here. So they want 41. And then the manufacturer distributor's job is just to fill in the unit price and the total price. All right, moving right along. And that was the hand crank. So let's look at the butt hinge now. And instead of, for the rest of these, instead of looking at the same old solicitation, let's just take a look in Gov Purchase and what the thing looks like. And this one was actually duplicated in uh, uh, Beta Sam as well. But we pull directly from uh, the military. All right, so it's a Boeing part. You can see that right here at the top. And see, Boeing has many, many locations and cage codes. So this is the St. Louis, one of the St. Louis cage codes. And there's a contact person, etc. And it's not likely, though. In most cases, Boeing probably hasn't sold that part. You can see here the manufacturers and or distributors that have sold that part. And just for the record, for you machine shops, let's, let's take a look at the mold rules. And the mold rules determine many things, but the AMC code in the mold rules determine whether or not a manufacturer can make that part. So if it's a one or a two, then that means they'll pretty much allow a machine shop or a manufacturer or any manufacturer to make that part. If it's a three or higher, the higher the number, the more mission critical. If it's a three or higher, it'd have to come from one of these companies. One of these, now a distributor could buy from one of these companies, but it would have to come from a quote unquote approved source. And if you want to know more about how to become a approved source, we can talk about that. So let's just look at a couple more of these. This butt hinge. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, protect, protective dust cap. Another really small, really cheap little thing. But they, they purchase them rather frequently. And the cool thing is, if you serve the military on something small, you can build up past performance and then you can move up the food chain, if you will. And let's take a look at one more here. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this uh, metal grill. See what we have here. You see it's an AMC code one. The drawings are available. The estimated value is $9,000. Uh, Four hundred dollars, and so they want quite a few shelf price. When the military ships from depot to depot or to an army base, etc., or even because many of these parts go out of the country, um, they're outside of the United States, Oconus, and they're on aircraft carriers and different ships. They end up all over the world. So it's important that the quality is high. For instance, this one is goes on an M1A2 tank, right? And it's a little part, but it's important that the quality is high for that reason. These are for our troops and our war fighters. And here's the award history. And you see it goes in various increments. And you can see the dollar amounts vary as well. In our next segment, we'll cover engineering opportunities. Engineering is a very broad category. It, you know, there's civil engineering, there's road engineering, there's so many types of engineering. The primary next code for engineering is 541330, and that covers a myriad of engineering. But per your request, 
we will look at a few relevant engineering opportunities. And at the end, we'll look at a few of the companies who are winning engineering contracts. So let's get down to business. In our next section, we'll cover engineering opportunities, another new subject for us. And again, these are by popular demand. So thank you for your emails, your many, many emails, uh, communications, and your phone calls. So this first one is from the state of Connecticut. Uh, let's see, town of Manchester. So let's just take a quick look. So it's an invitation to bid. You don't have lots of time. And it's to engineer baseball diamond infield clay material mixture. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. You see the contact information there. So again, if this is something that you provide, uh, you don't have lots of time, but there still is a little time. So let's take a look at the next one here. Dorchester County, South Carolina, Architectural and Engineering Services. So let's see what this is all about. You see we're doing a little state and local here. Dorchester County is requesting statements of qualifications from consulting firms interested in providing engineering and architectural services for the proposed Summers Corner Fire and EMS Station. So, again, if this is something, a service that you provide, A&E, consulting, construction management, etc., this may be an opportunity for you. And again, you don't have lots of time, but you do have some time because what they're asking for is not a proposal, of course, because to build this type of facility will take a while. They're requesting statements of qualification. That's the first step. All right, on to the next one in our engineering section. Okay, now this one is for uh, Montgomery County. That's actually our county, Maryland, for Engineering Services Stormwater Management. Let's take a look at that one, see what's happening in Montgomery County, good old Montgomery County. And um, Montgomery County is announcing that they intend to enter into a contract with an engineering firm to provide technical services necessary to inspect and recommend repair and maintenance for all types of SWMBMPs. So, again, if this is service that you provide, there you are. And then you can download the RFP. You have the contact information right there. On to the next one. All right. Now, this one is from the Department of Veteran Affairs. And it's for the expansion of a pharmacy. So as you can see in this section, we covered mainly state and local, but now we have one federal. And there it is. And it's a free solicitation. You still have time. It's a service disabled veteran owned small business set aside. And it's a pre-solicitation or pre-sol, as we like to uh, call them, notice for the establishment of an archi architect engineering AE contract with services to be performed at the Salt Lake City Veteran Affairs Medical Center. And then you see the location and it's being set aside again for SDVOSB firms. This announcement is not a request for proposal nor solicitation, no solicitation package will be issued until after an evaluation has been made on the provided SF-330s. Now, the thing is, they want to see how many service disabled veteran-owned small businesses there are available that have the qualifications to do this type of work. So again, if you're one of the many service disabled veteran-owned small businesses who watch our show, and, I, and there are many, many that do, then take a look at this. If this is something that you qualify for, then you definitely want to reply as it is a set aside. In our next segment, we'll cover one of your favorites and mine too, PPE, personal protection equipment. 
We receive more phone calls and emails regarding this subject than any other, and for good reason. But as we mentioned in our last episode, and as you probably have seen, many of you, on the news or you've read, you've seen online, there are a few small businesses who won major PPE contracts and weren't able to deliver. And those contracts had to be revoked. And those opportunities had to be put back on the marketplace. So, again, if you were not in the supply chain prior to this, then make sure you have the financial wherewithal, the capability to distribute, and hopefully the product that you are quoting or proposing. Because it damages the reputation of all small businesses. Because to large business, government, and institution, in many cases, small business equals risk. So, make us all look good by staying in your lane, having your ducks in a row when you propose. Because what you'll see in one of the opportunities, it was a small business set aside, and then it was pulled to be full and open, meaning mid-tier and large businesses can participate as well. So small businesses had a crack at a huge PPE opportunity, but then it had to be redone because of what's happening. So small businesses are still encouraged to bid, but it's not a small business set aside anymore. So just be careful with the PPE quotes. Now having said that, let's get down to business. In our next section, one of your favorites, PPE. Now, before I get to the actual solicitations, I did mention last week that um, the government had awarded several large, very large PPE contracts. Also, a few states did this as well, awarded large PPE contracts to companies that could not deliver on the product and couldn't, could not meet the deadline. And that really hurts all small businesses because the one thing that government and large business and institutions, when they think about small business and doing business with a small business, the one word that always comes up in the matrix is risk. And so when a small business does not deliver, it affects everyone. As a result, there have been more stringent uh, guidelines set on what you need to provide in order to provide PPE. With that being said, let's look at a few opportunities. Now, here is one that we've been tracking from the Department of Homeland Security, it's actually from uh, FEMA. And so let's just take a look, see what the uh, new updates are. And of course, you have the ability to go and take a look at these at any time. So this is unrestricted, full and open, so because now take a look at this because of what's happened with small businesses certain small businesses and not being able to deliver they changed this from a small business set aside now it's unrestricted full and open but small businesses are encouraged to submit offers so that's what happens when you know small businesses don't perform now large businesses can win and this is a huge opportunity this is a very large opportunity that was set aside for small business but not anymore so let's take a look at the next one now here's one from navy department of defense we've been take we've been tracking this one as well so let's see let's see if, what the updates are so basically you can take a look at the solicitation for the updates and it's actually over in singapore so if you're interested in this, you can go online and take a look. And you can always contact us at info at govpurchase.com. And then here's another one we've been tracking with federal prison systems. And this is ongoing until uh, September 30th. And let's see. So they just made uh, a couple of updates and you have the same contact people there. So you see the, the, the market is definitely not saturated, but it is beginning to settle. The market is beginning to settle and it is beginning to lean more towards um, companies that are established and have the financial wherewithal to deliver. Because think about it, 
at the end of the day, this PPE is very necessary. And if you're one of the people depending on that PPE in order to do your job at a, at a hospital or at an airport or anywhere else, then, and it's not available, then that puts one's life at risk. So, And then here's one we're tracking as well. And I know a couple of you have actually uh, responded to this one. It's taking a second to load here from the state of Utah. And, and, and if it takes too long, Utah, then we'll have to miss this one. And I mean, that does happen sometimes. So I'm, I'm not messing around here today with this PPE, as you can see. And so maybe we'll come back to that. Let's give it a chance to load because this is live. We look at these live. And here's one from DLA Defense Logistics Agency. They're still uh, requesting information. So let's take a look. All right. There's still a little time left on this one, but really not much. So hopefully the people that were interested, you have re had a chance to respond to this RFI. Doesn't take long to respond to an RFI. And if it's something that you qualify for, we recommend that you always do that. So let's see if we can find this Utah baby. Here it is. All right. And there it is. So uh, still open. Still plenty of time. <laughs> You have until 2099, of course, that's a typo. That happens sometimes with state and local uh, governments. And there's some more opportunities from the state of Utah, as you can see. Because we, we pull everything from all 50 states, as well as over 9,000 cities and counties. And that was today's PPE section. In our next section, will cover general COVID-19 opportunities. There is so much that falls under this category that it's worth separating and looking at in and of itself. We won't cover PPE, mask, gown, etc. opportunities here. We'll look at perhaps cleaning opportunities and all types of opportunities, PC opportunities, cybersecurity opportunities related to COVID-19. This pandemic as unfortunate as it is, has created a great deal of business for small, medium, and large businesses. So let's look at some relevant COVID-19 opportunities. Sometimes they'll be redundant. It could be PPE, uh, masks, gowns, etc. But what we've tried to do here is mix it up and focus on actual different types of COVID-19 opportunities. So you can see the first one is coming from Department of Defense Air Force, and it's for COVID-19 quantitative antibody testing. So let's take a look at that one. Looks pretty good. All right, there's still, there's still time. And it's an attached combo performance work statement, wage determination, and contract security clause. And here are all the documents. And it's Tra Travis Air Force Base in California. So you can see all of the information there for antibody testing and probably a few other items as well. So let's go to the next one. Now here's one. This is a community development block grant from the state of Massachusetts. And we're including this one because we had been requested, you know, some of the nonprofits and other organizations had asked about block grants. So here's the information. It's from the Department of Housing and Community Development, and it's a COVID-19 block grant from the state of Massachusetts. And there's still a little time left on this one, but not much. So if this is something you're interested in, contact us right away or go directly to the state of Massachusetts. Here's one from the state of Louisiana, Consulting Services for Emergency Recovery. So let's see. And this is in conjunction with FEMA. Interesting. And here's all of the information. And the proposal actually comes out on the 15th of June. And it's a pretty big one. 
pretty big one covering lots of services from the state of Louisiana. So again, if this is something you're interested in, you can try to find it or you can contact us. And we will forward you these opportunities as well. We, we have analysts uh, who work on this stuff every day. So if you contact us, we can forward you opportunities <laughs> until it gets to the point where we can. Because our call volume, email volume, everything is picking up as a result of this show. Uh, and we're, we're receiving, you know, we're getting uh, thousands of uh, viewers now per week. So let's look at this RFI Innovations Paratransit Service Delivery for the uh, state of Massachusetts. So as you can see, we're, we're mixing it up. All righty. And there it is. And this one opens on June 17th. And then all of the files for the transport services are located here. You just have to basically fill out the um, the uh, RFP, the state of Massachusetts. Very nicely done, Massachusetts, by the way. And let's see, one here from Department of Homeland Security. This is an RFI, Request for Information. So again, and this is for PPE. So if you're providing PPE, they want information now first, prior to solicitation. All right. So they're letting you know there's been a change in how they will acquire PPE now. So it's a, it's a request for information and it's something you definitely need to take a look at and view the changes. And now we have uh, digital, digital uh, thermometers from the Department of Veteran Affairs. And I know we have a client that's uh, actively bidding on this particular opportunity. And this is ongoing. So you can take a look at that. This actually does not expire until September. So, and there are your points of contact. So if you're if you provide digital thermometers, it's something you should take a look at. And that was our COVID nineteen section. I'd like to give a special thanks to all of our sponsors. They've been with us since the first procurement daily newsletter and since our first episode of Procurement Weekly. The largest manufacturer of automotive electronic parts, Bosch. The largest manufacturer of speakers, Bose. The Department of Defense, especially Washington Headquarters Services at the Pentagon. The Department of Justice, particularly the FBI and federal prison system. The Association of Government Contractors, that's my organization. Vets Group, Joe Wynn. GovConnects, Vaughn Marino. The National Business League, Ken Harris, Weatherhaven, Page Global, James Page, and one of our best sponsors, North Carolina State University, Rickman Enterprise, Army Property, Sherman Powell, Hutchison Group, The Run Flat Company, Dow Corning, Mid-Tier Advocacy Group, Tanya Saunders, who's doing great work for mid-sized businesses, the RFP Success Company, the Department of Veteran Affairs, Playbook Investors Network, Choice Cybersecurity, and SAIC. To become a sponsor or to subscribe to our daily newsletter, or if you have any suggestions for topics or success stories, again, please email us at info at govpurchase.com. GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting, proudly presents the new television show, Procurement Weekly. Procurement Weekly is all about contracts now. What contracts are available? Who do you contact? Who is winning these contracts? We spotlight the agencies and companies that are awarding these contracts, and we tell you who the contact person is who awarded that contract. Procurement Weekly featuring success stories by telling you who the winners are.
In these times, staying up to date is vitally important, and Procurement Weekly will keep you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities. So now, be sure to watch this week's episode of Procurement Weekly with your host, Kim Harwell. This Sunday at 1 p.m. on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. And here we are at the grand finale, at the big roundup. And this section is always fast moving. These are the awards. Who's winning? And there's a lot of activity now happening, and it's all online. Small businesses are winning billions of dollars in government, federal, state, and local contracts. There's subcontracting. There are teaming agreements happening. There are joint ventures. And so we'll take a look at some of it. Who are the winners? Where is the money? We'll even give you a few contact names, and we'll let you check out what they're winning, what some of these companies are winning, what agencies are awarding. So now, without further ado, the winners are... Here's the lightning round, as I'll call it today. Who's winning? Keep up. We're going to go pretty fast here. So let's see. What do we have? What do we have here? So first, we'll cover manufacturing and small manufacturers. So let's take a look at some contractors and let's do a federal supply class. And one of the most popular is 5340. That's commercial hardware. And let's do uh, Michigan companies. You know, Michigan's been pretty hard hit, one of my favorite states. Let's do uh, Michigan recent awardees. Now, there'll be quite a few, so we'll just pick a few here. Uh, let's see. So let's take a look at LMM products or Manista Industries, as a matter of fact. And let's see what they have been up to. They're located in Holt, Michigan. All right. So they've been doing pretty well, selling lots of rods, door assemblies, etc. So very good. Congratulations to Manista Industries. And let's take a look at another uh, Michigan corporation out of Whitmore Lake, Michigan. That's close to Ann Arbor. Michigan CNC Tool, Inc. And let's see what they've been up to. Okay, congratulations. They've won recent awards. Threaded standoff cover, uh, access covers, pop-up hatches, uh, vehicle brackets, uh, wiper block. All right, very consistent as you can see. So congratulations to Michigan CNC Tool Inc. As you can see, small businesses are out there really doing well. And let's look at uh, Motor Parts Inc. of Michigan. Let's see what they've been up to here lately. All right, nice small sales, but very consistent as you can see. Very consistent. Okay, so manufacturers are doing well. Congratulations for Michigan manufacturers. And now let's take a look at our next section of winners, engineering. So we'll just go right here. And let's use the engineering NAICS code. 541330 is the engineering uh, standard NAICS code, the primary NAICS. And, oh boy, here we go. There's lots of activity going on. And let's just sort this baby by total. All right, sort it again. All right, and here we go. SAIC, uh, $139 million. Booz Allen, $130 million. Northrop Grumman, $78 million. Lytos, $70 million. CSRA, 67 million. So you say, well, where are the small businesses? Well, these are large awards. So then let's go back. Hey, Terratech, they're a small business, 29 million. So congratulations, Terratech. So let's go back now and let's look at what's happening with small business engineering companies. All right, that's better, huh? For small businesses anyway. And we'll sort by total. And there's a company called um, OPRLLC who uh, won a $11 million contract with NASA for Flight Dynamic Support Services, three. And OPR, for the record, is located in Beltsville, Maryland, right up the street. 
So let's take a look at another one. Sort by total again. All right. Key logic systems, one of my favorite companies. Uh, mission execution and strategy analysis from Department of Energy. And just for the record, Mary Rort is uh, in charge of that contract. And then and uh, Geo uh, Kelly M. Geo as well. All right. So let's take a look here. Let's go. Let's take a look at another one. I have to keep mixing these up. And just for the record, Key Logic is located in Morgantown, West Virginia. Good old West Virginia. All right. Another engineering small business. Uh, A3 Technology, Infrastructure and Operation Service Support. Potomac Wave Constru Consulting, another one of my favorite companies. Eight million for regulatory support services, Department of Homeland Security. Mosaic Technologies Group, uh, GSA. Resource Management Concepts, 2.9 million with the Department of Homeland Security. And then you can see a few more there, quite a few actually. And let's do a little bonus here. Let's go back to engineering and take a look at some uh, 8A companies who are winning contracts. 541330. And let's do 8A this time. 8A computer, not sole source. All right. And there you are. This is a JV Acura Rosser 8A JV joint venture, 3 million. ATI Inc. 3.4 million. ITA International, 3.4 million, etc. There's Bowhead, they do a lot, 8A. ASRC, they do quite a bit. So as you can see, there's uh, Obsidian Solutions, great company. So as you can see, 8As are doing well also. All right, and then it wouldn't be a show right now if we didn't do PPE. So here we go. PPE. Take a look and see what we have. So some of the usual companies are winning contracts. Some of the larger companies. All right, so let's go back now and let's take a look at some small businesses who are winning PPE. Okay, not bad, not bad. All right, some of the same companies, they're winning over and over again. And let's see if there are any service disabled, veteran owned small businesses winning PPE contracts. Okay, there's one, RCG of North Carolina. So congratulations to RCG of North Carolina, located in Rayford, North Carolina. And then finally, let's take a look at some COVID awards. And again, you know, these, these will be all over the place. It could be deep cleaning um, or any type of serve, COVID related service. So let's take a look. All right, quite a bit. Let's sort this baby. There you go. So we looked at some of these, Janssen, 3M, Parsons, all right, Parsons, 40 million, Dell, Tantus, 8A. So now, now that we've done that, let's go back and take a look at a few small business COVID-related awards, see what we find here. All right. Asset Group, Vixel Solutions, Mass Services, a company called Government Acquisition sold laptops in support of COVID to the Department of Homeland Security. And Government Acquisitions is located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Congratulations, Government Acquisitions. Let's see who else we have here. 
foreign translation services in support of COVID, Homeland Security, Creston Company, and let's see where they're located. They're right in Annapolis, Maryland. So congratulations to Creston Company for those translation services. And here's Alliant Enterprises. They sold touch-free thermometers. And sometimes they can be a supplier for you as well. And they're located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So congratulations. Oh, and then here are, is their GSA schedule. It's a 652A. Just for the record. All right, there's a lion again, winning quite a bit, and Wilbur. So congratulations to all of our winners. And again, if you need any help and assistance whatsoever in the area of procurement, federal, state, and local, prime contracting, subcontracting, teaming, and or commercial business, feel free to reach out to us at info at govpurchase.com. GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting, proudly presents the new television show, Procurement Weekly. Procurement Weekly is all about contracts now. What contracts are available? Who do you contact? Who is winning these contracts? We spotlight the agencies and companies that are awarding these contracts, and we tell you who the contact person is who awarded that contract. Procurement Weekly. Featuring success stories by telling you who the winners are. And these times, staying up to date is vitally important. And Procurement Weekly will keep you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities. So now, be sure to watch this week's episode of Procurement Weekly with your host, Kim Harwell. This Sunday at 1 p.m. on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel.